BKC, BKC, you know it's your boy Jay Reed. About to get started on another color genetics video. I know you guys been waiting for one. Just wanted to show you guys, you know, our great white litter. We have two boys, two females available from this litter. Uh, two of our females are already sold. Uh, one of which that we are not even showing here because, you know, that puppy is already gone. Uh, of course, guys. Um, if you guys are interested, you're calling from local or you're messaging locally, uh, just hit me up and we'll be able to make something work. Of course, our international clients, you know, we have stuff coming for you guys in the future. So just keep your head up. Let's jump straight into our color genetics video, Bloodline. What's up guys, you know, it's your boy Jay Reed with the Bloodline Kennel Club. Today, we're going to be talking about some more color genetics. I know you guys seen my videos before so just make sure you like and subscribe hit that notification bell remember we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers so today we're going to be talking about the pied ball gene this is a very popular one a lot of people have been asking a lot of questions so today we're going to be hitting up on the pied ball gene so the pied ball gene is represented by the letter s and of course guys you guessed it s stands for sport as you know the pied ball gene this is the spotted colors on the dog. Could be different variations, which we'll get into as we go along the video. Now, one thing it is important to note is that the pie ball gene is a recessive gene, so it needs to be double recessive in order to show. So that would reflect as SS, that's lowercase SS, if a dog is pied. And if a dog is lowercase SN, that's a carrier. And then if a dog is lowercase NN, it's a non-pied dog usually wouldn't show on the dog's DNA test. This could also show up as capital S, lowercase s for carriers and capital SS for non-pied dogs on a DNA test. One of the main things to note is that the pied gene is actually a pattern. It's not necessarily a color similar to the mole gene. So in that case, we know the pied gene could affect different color variations. Uh, and those colors would not appear on the main coat, but however, it's going to appear in the spots, which is what we call the pied. So we would have different variations, for example, the brindle pied, the fawn pied, uh, we have the chocolate pied dogs, we also have blue pied dogs, and you know, more commonly, what people are looking for is the mole pied dogs. And uh, this is something that you'll have if the mole dogs. And uh, it's something that we'll be touching base on when we go deeper into color genetics. And this is an example of a mole pied dog on the top right hand side of my screen. Just so you guys can have an idea. And of course that could be any color in the spots right there. So of course guys we're going to jump into our Punnett square. So that way you guys can understand this better. So on the left hand side we have a dog uh, which is not pied. And a dog on the right hand side which is pied showing double recessive S. Here we have a um, Punnett square. So basically, if these two dogs were to breed, uh, what we would receive is dogs reflecting SN or uh, uppercase S, lowercase S, and that would be the result of 100% carriers. These dogs will not reflect the pie color on their skins. However, they will carry one copy of the pie. So if you breed them in future, with a pie dog, you are possibly uh, you have a possibility of getting pie. So yes, on the genotype, but no on the phenotype, which is what reflects on the dog. The next one we have is going to be a dog who's uh, a pie carrier bred to a pie color dog, and what we're going to get is 50% of the dog's pie, as you can see calculated on our Punnett square, guys. As you, all you have to do is match the letters. And this makes it much easier for you. And the other 50% is going to be carriers. So these dogs are all going to carry pie. However, only 50% are going to show pie colored, uh, pied colors uh, spots on their skin. So the next one we're going to jump into, guys, is pied to pied. Of course, you know, that would result in 100% pied dogs. Uh, I want to show you guys this on a Punnett square right now. Uh, however, one of the things, guys, is that you want to make sure that you're not continuously breeding pie to pie, especially inbreeding. This could result in an extreme pie. An extreme pie is what is not what you want to have. 
these dogs could possibly have hearing problems or completely be completely deaf they might just reflect one spot of pie somewhere in the body if it's however on the ears or the nose or the mouth area or the muzzle then you might not have any issues again guys this has been the for breeder series i hope you guys enjoy this video of course make sure you like make sure you subscribe guys this is when i'm going to keep the movement going stay blessed bloodline